I paid a grand total of £45 for this faulty Xbox One S 500 gigabyte console on eBay. And in today's video, I'm gonna try and fix it. It's very hot here at the moment in the UK, so I apologize for my sweaty bean. The listing on eBay states, 500 gigabyte gaming console, white, faulty, broken, no power. Xbox One S is broken, but doesn't turn on. Some stains and scratches on the top and the bottom of the case. Being very well packaged. We like that a lot. And when I say we, I'm talking about myself, not another person who runs JDT, unless there's two of us. Maybe there's two Joey Does Techs. I can confirm, somebody has been drawing on this Xbox. That is blue ink on the casing at the top. We also have quite a bit of dirt on this side. I don't know if you can see here as well, we do have a little bit of a chip on the console. You see how that stands out here? Backside of the console actually looks fine. And would you look at that? It's not been opened. The warranty seal is still intact. Things you love to see. Let's see if it powers on. Cause you guys know what it's like. Sometimes I receive some faulty consoles. It happens all the time. I just push a button and they work even though it says no power. Hopefully it doesn't blow up. Nope, that's all good. We're fine. Do we get power? Let's find out. No, we don't. Okay, accurate description. Let's go. My guess, and I'm kind of hoping actually, because I've not had one of these for a while, is that it's the 12 volt rail on the right side of the console, which is here. Usually when it's no power like this, the MOSFETs go, or one of the MOSFETs goes. You replace that and it can work. If that's the case, that'll be pucker. There we go, finally, that took a while. Hang on a minute. That is not a 500 gig hard drive. It's not a one terabyte hard drive. That says two TB, which stands for two terabytes. Now I've never seen a two terabyte hard drive in an Xbox One S ever. And this definitely hasn't been opened. You can tell from the amount of dust and the screws were factory 100% plus the warranty sticker. This has never been opened. On another note, this is caked in dust. So it doesn't surprise me that this has stopped working. The whole thing has dust bunnies everywhere, all the way back here even. Now what I'm about to show you isn't for the faint hearted. I said to you at the start, I thought it'd be a MOSFET down the uh, down the power rail here, and these are actually looking all good. But if we just mosey on up this side of the board, what do we have here? An absolute bomb site. All the chips in this area, the HDMI port is screwed. This little transistor, Lord knows what's happened to it. And the retimer chip has gone on holiday to Spain. That whole area is fried. Let's go under the microscope and take a closer look. This poor puppy is the retimer chip. I don't even know what components exist around this area anymore. I feel like my whole life has been a lie. Look at the hole in the side of this chip. If we move on up from this chip, look at the state of this little resistor, the board around it, which is just crust, and this transistor. What is this? Like an oil-like substance. It's gotta be milk or something. Then if we move over to this side of the board, ESD filter is no more. What's meant to be here, I have no idea. And then for the actual port itself, yeah, you're done. I've taken pictures of each fatal bit of water damage here, just so I know what components to replace, because I've got a lot to replace, and it's very hot. But nonetheless, Let's get to work and see if we can fix it. I have confidence, foolish confidence. I know this sounds stupid, but I do also just want to check the 12 volt line to see if we do have a short. So I've got the meter in continuity mode, which is the mode that beeps when we have a continuous path. We're meant to have a beep on this side because all these three pins are ground, which we do. And if we have a beep here, it means we have a 12 volt shorted rail. No, we don't. So actually it's pretty interesting. We don't have a short on the 12 volt line, but something in this area is destroying the voltage. But I think we know why it's not turning on. Because there was quite a lot of soldering in this video, I'm thinking it might actually be better for me to just talk over the audio track and try and give you an idea of what I'm doing from my own perspective. I start off by getting every single component that looks remotely bad off of the board. My Atten hot air station was set to 450 degrees Celsius with an airflow speed of 80%. Here I'm just adding as much leaded solder to that area so that when I transfer the components from a donor board, it's easier to solder and I can use a lower temperature. I have my soldering iron set to 400 degrees Celsius and the flux I'm using is Kingbo RMA218. The solder is Weller 6040. Thank you. 
Now I clean it with some isopropyl alcohol and a cotton bud. Same temperatures as before and now time to replace all the components. Here I'm using wick to remove the leaded solder for the pre-balled ESD filter. Hello, it's me. This is the TDP158. This is the retimer chip that we had to swap over. Now, if you ask me, that side looks hunky-dory. This side also looks hunky-dory. There is a little bit on the end. You see that first pin on the left near the A, but I think that's okay because it literally ends on that pad that's underneath it. So that should be no problem at all. This side is also fine. Looks really hunky-dory. Nice job, but we have an issue with this final side. As we know, the TDP chip took a lot of damage and what I think has happened is maybe there was a mini explosion on this side just here and it's torn the trace. Can you see we have a line on that trace which goes to this small wire just by the five here so I need to really quickly run a wire from this blob of solder over to this trace put some conformal coating on it and we should be good to go as for the rest of the board I'm pretty confident that everything is in the right place that area took me such a long time where the ESD filter is but I think everything is okay. I still have to do the HDMI port. I'm doing that last because I wanted to get all the little bits out of the way. But I honestly think that we've done a, uh, a good job, an okay job. I do also just want to test for continuity from this little trace to this resistor here to make sure that this isn't a cut in the line. Meters in continuity mode. We're checking the one that I think might be okay first. So just over here and here. Yeah, that's fine. That's on the pin as well. So that's good. Just gonna scrape back this trace here. The more trace we have to work with, the easier it is to solder it in my opinion. And there we go, we have our exposed trace. If I take the meter, which is again in continuity mode, let's see. Okay. Okay, wait, so we still do get continuity. Maybe that's because underneath the chip, the trace goes under this layer, I have no idea. That's clearly a break though. I don't want to rub on that too much because I don't want to make it deeper than what it is. But yeah, that's fine. And like I said before, everywhere around the chip seems to be A-OK. -okay. I think all we need to do is the port. On that note, I am just going to cover this back up with some uh, conformal coating. Like nothing ever happened. Check it's dried. Solid. Look at that. Here I'm now dropping the new HDMI port onto the board and I believe the temperatures are 460 degrees Celsius with an airflow speed of 100%.
you understood how sweaty I am now, then you wouldn't want to know me. Trust me. Okay, final product. We have the TDP 158 retimer redone. We have all the caps and resistors around it. They've all been transferred from another board. The transistor up here has also been transferred from another board. We've sorted out this area here, the ESD filter. That seems to be good with all the resistors, all the caps in all the right places, hopefully. And finally, the HDMI port, which looks to be solid. I am just gonna quickly check. Every single one looks okay. And when I was cleaning up, none of them moved, so we should be all right. Just use the flow and drop method. Yeah, every single pin is absolutely solid. Grounding holes have lots of solder in them. Obviously there's a chance I press this power button and nothing happens. But the practice that I've managed to obtain from this board is second to none. I'm so, so happy. I've just enjoyed every single second of doing this, you know. I've got the meter in diode mode. So I've got the black probe here and the red is on ground. And I'm just gonna see what readings we get. We get 0.6 voltage drop there. That's perfectly normal. This one I think is lower than the rest. This is 0.3 volts, 0.6. 0.6, so this area is looking a-okay, 0.6, 0.6, I think I've mentioned that already. If we go down to the retimer chip, let's just take a couple of random ones around here. We get a 0.2 voltage drop here. Don't know if that's healthy. 0.2 there, 0.2 here. It seems to be a 0.2 voltage drop to the retimer chip on almost every single cap and resistor. These ones are 0.7, these three here, 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0.7. 0.7. I don't know what the readings are here. I don't know if they're meant to be 0.2. On the transistor, we have 0.3 there. We've got ground here and we've got 0.6 here. You know what? I'm gonna say screw it and we're just gonna give it a test. I'm not gonna check to see if those readings are correct or not. I'm literally just gonna give it a test because why not? So wish me luck, here we go. So many different things could go wrong right now. This could blow up, could catch on fire. It could just short out again. Anything can happen. We might get power, we might not. If we do get power, we then have to worry about if it displays on the screen. Here we go. I'm plugging in the power right now. Power's in. Any red lights or anything? No. Nope. Do we get power to this board? Oh my God. No way, no way, no way. We get power, we get power. We get fan spin. No, no way. Let's go, man. It's on. It's, it's actually on. Do we get a display? This is probably my best fix yet if this ends up working. Just from a soldering perspective. Here we go. Moment of truth. Do we get anything on the screen? I've plugged it in. I've plugged in the HDMI. I don't think we get anything on the screen. Okay, so we still get nothing on the screen. That's fine. I'm clutching at straws, but I'm just trying a different hard drive just to see if, it, if that hard drive's playing up. The only thing is that it didn't turn off after about a minute, so I don't think it is a hard drive, but I'm gonna check. I'm just trying to move the cable about as well to see if that's an issue, but it's not. Okay, it's not hard drive. Back to the drawing board. I don't know how I didn't see this before when I was checking the pins. I guess it just didn't really occur to me, but <laughs> you see here, look, there's no there's no trace going to this pad here, which I, I you know I think that's a pretty important trace. So I'm gonna have a look quickly in diode mode to see if we are getting a reading on this. So I think for this we should read about 0.6, something around that. So if I just tap this pin here, yeah, we get open line. So it's not connected to here. So I need to run a jumper wire from here to this pad here. So let's do that quick. Here we go. Do we get an image on the screen? We know it powers on. After making that change on the HDMI port, I really hope this works. If it does, I'll be ecstatic. Let's go. It turns on still. That's good. Okay. Do we get a display? The original two terabyte hard drive is back on the board. Do we get anything show up on the screen? Is the retimer good? I don't believe it, man. Let's go, man. Come on. Yes, we fixed it. This, this Xbox was dead in the water, man, and we are fixed. I'm sweating with pain. That's what I'm talking about. Oh my God. Take me to a desktop, please. And there's the desktop. I will play this thoroughly before I even think about selling it, just to make sure that we are 100% all good. But even if I wiggle the cable, the HDMI port, no flickering, nothing, really good. One of my best fixes.
easy. I have a Discord, so feel free to go and check that out. It'll be in the link in the description down below. Thumbs up the video if you enjoyed it, because I certainly did. Sub if you're new around here. And feel free to take a look at this video where I try and fix a bunch of Xbox Ones. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. This was awesome.